Starting in Zechariah chapter 5 verse 6, we read, And I said, What is it? Now this is Zechariah um, speaking to an angel. He's being shown a vision. And the angel says to him, This is an aphah that goes forth. And he said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the aphah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the, into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. That, that was Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. Now, the thing that was most interesting to me that I stumbled across today was um, the word resemblance. When I looked it up, it turned out to be um, an eye. I looked it up on blueletterbible.com and but before I show you that I want to um, look at um, more parts of this in Zechariah 5 also I want to bring attention to the um, woman I want you to keep in mind that this is a woman and well I guess that's where on this topic also the Bible does call it a woman and not um, something as a woman or like a woman it just says woman and uh, so far I don't believe the, the 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 language in this vision or if it could be called a vision is symbolic at all as we read in um, the previous the previous verses well we didn't read it but as you can read in the previous verses before this um, Zechariah sees a flying scroll and that is probably his best description of a missile but since it's not symbolic, uh, I don't see any reason to try to make this allegorical or say it's a metaphor for something. Um, Zechariah sees a woman and that's what it is. It's a woman. Um, but moving on, I don't want to spend too much time on that. So he also says in this um, chapter and verse that this woman is wickedness. And another word for wickedness is evil and iniquity and um well you can think of some <laughs> but moving on to resemblance getting into the definition of resemblance um in blueletterbible.com is h586n and that is probably a primitive word an i literally or figuratively going back to zechariah 5 we see the angel says this is their resemblance so in other words this is their eye throughout all the earth or through all the earth so this woman is the is this evil woman this wickedness is the eye so what that makes you automatically think about the Illuminati right on in the all-seeing eye so this angel says that this woman is the eye Effectively suppressed for centuries, a group of Gnostic Gospels were discovered in the Egyptian desert in 1945, now known as the Nag Hammadi Library. This immensely important discovery includes texts that were once thought to have been entirely destroyed during the early Christian struggle to define orthodoxy. Gnosis literally means knowledge in the context of a spiritual knowledge or divine insight emerging directly from the inside, such as an inner voice, a gut feeling, or conscience, not dependent on any data from one's outside environment. The Knights Templars likely acquired their secrets of Gnosis or internal alchemy and the Kabbalah from several different sources during their nearly 200 years in the Middle East. The stated goal of these sacred and guarded practices is nothing less than to literally evolve the person's consciousness and being into a higher state of existence. This would include the attainment 
of certain mystical abilities such as clairvoyance, heightened intuition, astral vision, etc. Though the true origin of the Kabbalah is in dispute, in his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, Honorary 33rd Degree Freemason Manly P. Hall says that, and I quote, While the greatest minds of the Jewish and Christian worlds have realized that the Bible is a book of allegories, few seem to have taken the trouble to investigate its symbols and parables. When Moses instituted his mysteries, he is said to have given to a chosen few initiates certain oral teachings which could never be written but were to be preserved from one generation to the next by word of mouth transmission. Those instructions were in the form of philosophical keys by means of which the allegories were made to reveal their hidden significance. These mystic keys to their sacred writings were called by the Jews the Kabbalah. The Knights Templars clearly had a very special relationship with Mary Magdalene and in fact venerated her as one of their patronesses. The Templars practiced sex magic and the goddess represented this occult method of attaining divine wisdom. Snakes and owls were also venerated symbols which represented Gnostic wisdom. In Greek mythology, a miniature owl traditionally represents or accompanies Athena, the virgin goddess of wisdom, or Minerva, her incarnation in Roman mythology. Snake goddess figurines found by the British archaeologist Arthur Evans in 1903 of a woman with an owl perched atop of her head holding a snake in each hand have been excavated from Minoan archaeological sites in Crete dating back from approximately 1600 BC. The Knights Templars also came to venerate the Black Madonna, which to them represented both the attractive power of Venus as well as the hidden secret wisdom of Sophia. Incidentally, the Greek noun Sophia translates to wisdom. This helps to better understand why the Templars brought back numerous black Madonnas with them from the Holy Land, building Gothic cathedrals around them in Europe, always dedicated to Mary. If you visit a Gothic cathedral today, there's a good chance you'll see a stained glass window decorated with motifs centered around the goddess symbol of the rose, or an actual black Madonna relic. The goddess tradition is also known as the teaching of the rose. The rose is a symbol of the goddess, as well as for alchemy and gnosis, which are branches of the ancient goddess spiritual tradition, and the rose was used as a symbol for Mary as well as it was also used as an ancient symbol of Venus. But also when they mention this dull care, they are also talking about the being that they consider to be Satan. And that being is the God of the Old Testament. That is the Christian God. And so they view him as Satan. He, he created this world and and in their minds, he tried to imprison them. He tried to imprison them in the garden, and the serpent set them free from the garden. Now, it's pretty clear they mention two persons in this in this video that I'm showing you here. Doe carries one, and and we know, or at least I know, that Doe carries our God. So the other person in opposition to our God must be Satan. The real Satan, I mean. But they, of course, worship Satan, so they have things switched around. But the wilding rose blows on the broken battlements of Tyre, and walks rend the stones of Babylon. For beauty is eternal, and we bow to beauty everlasting. For lasting happiness, we turn to one alone. And she surrounds you now, great nature, 
refuge of the weary heart. All right. Now, did you hear that? I hope you can hear this. The speaker said that for lasting happiness, they turn to one alone, and that is great nature. So if you don't know that when they mention nature, they are actually referring to a being, then you will never realize uh, that they're actually worshiping Lucifer out in the open. And so that's why they can let you see videos like this. Um, that's why Freemasons can tell you their secrets in books because they don't think you understand them in the first place. So they're not afraid to tell you what their secrets are. But if you know who they're talking about, then, then there's a problem for them. So let's go back and um, now listen to it again with the understanding that nature is Lucifer. <laughs> 